Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so back in 2021, the council passed a resolution, which was resolution 2178, which authorizes professional engineering services with Garver Engineers Incorporated for an Oak Street Corridor study. Um, since then, a plan was formed with input from citizens, the planning commission, council members, staff, and numerous stakeholders. This included a steering committee formed in February of 2022 which included the Chamber of Commerce, local owners and representatives, developers, the, Univer the University of uh, Central Arkansas Administration, Conway Corporation, Planning Commissioners, and City Council members. I am pleased to announce that the Oak Street Ahead plan will be submitted to the Planning Commission on March 13th with a recommendation from staff to forward to the City Council meeting for March 28th with a recommendation to approve. Uh, Mayor. Staff, uh, staff requests recognition of James Walden, Juliet Ritchie, and Richard Corbin from Garver for their presentation of Oak Street Ahead. James Walden, where have I heard that name? He's, he's been around. <laughs> that's old news. Still on our payroll. That, that's old news. Always good to see you again, James. How are y'all this evening? I'm Juliet Ritchie, urban planning leader with Garver. Um, and we have been working on this study for a little over a year. Um, I will say that we had a sub RDG planning and design who worked with us on this project. They were in town last week for the open house, um, but they're out of no Omaha, Nebraska, and they weren't able to come back um, this week for this final presentation. Um, but they were a huge part of this plan um, and helped helped make it really good. Um, so everybody should have a copy at your at your table. If, if some, for some reason anybody doesn't have one, let me know, I can get you one. Um, I'm just gonna go through briefly, as you can see, it's a 59 page document. <laughs> it's an impressive, I mean, already. Thanks. Good. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda go through it briefly, just give you an overview of what's in it. Um, feel free to ask any questions that you want. I'm going to cover a little bit of it, and then Richard uh, Corbin is an engineer. He's going to cover some of the intersection improvements and transportation pieces, and then Mr. Walden will also be covering uh, part of it, um, representing uh, the city side uh, that he worked on for most of this. Um, so, again, if you have any questions, jump in, and we'll try to be pretty brief so we'll have time for extended questions and answers at the end. All right, so what is this study about? So the study area was Oak Street from Hark Rider to Hart Lane, um, so both sides of I-40. And the components of the plan, it's, a, it's pretty unique actually in, in the way that plans are. We covered transportation aspects, so that's both vehicular and active transportation components. Land use, um, looking at new development concepts within the city and then city quality uh, issues like landscaping, aesthetics, um, street fixtures, and that sort of thing. Um, RDG, we, work, we have worked with them on another corridor project in Fayetteville. That was one of the first ones that they did. And um, in that project, they coined the term corridor urbanism. Um, and it is a unique way uh, to look at corridors um, you know, and kind of understand what they are. Uh, there's a lot in planning nomenclature. There's a lot of different types of urbanism, new urbanism, um, you know, traditional urbanism, that sort of thing. But I do think that corridors are special creatures, and, um, and so that was a t uh, term that was coined. So some of the tenets of this are reality and respect. So understanding these corridors are what they are, right? They're commercial corridors. Um, some, some sections of them have been um, commercial corridors for longer than others, um, but they are a, an area of commerce in the city. And even if some areas are older than others, they're all, I mean, most of them are still very much thriving um, in the city of Conway. They're full of businesses and they bring people both locally and regionally uh, to Conway. Um, there's a resident population. Right now you don't have any um, residents that live directly on the corridor, but you do that live one block off, right, or even half a block off in, um, in some circumstances. And so understanding how they interact with the corridor. Opportunity and orientation, 
So looking at areas that have not yet been developed, so the area between East German Lane and Hart Lane um, on the east side of the corridor, there's a lot of area there that has not yet developed and thinking through what that'll be. And then also opportunity for redevelopment in parts of the corridor, which I think you've already seen um, in the last five to 10 years um, as people are reinvesting in those areas. And transportation function and choice. So looking at the function of the transportation that exists, um, vehicular, do you have congestion, um, what you do on parts of the corridor, um, how is it functioning at what times of day, is it functioning for the purposes you need, and then choice in transportation, which means can you integrate, um, you know, a bicyclist, and not even that they're riding up and down the corridor, but they may just be wanting to cross the corridor, or a pedestrian, right, so what type of environment do we have for them? And then the urban environment itself. So what does it look like? How do you um, exist in it? And how does that interact with the corridor and then in turn with the rest of your city? So I'm gonna go through real quick, just transportation. So we looked at a multitude of things on that. Intersection improvements, um, which Richard will talk about in a minute. Access management. Um, a lot of you probably realize that there are parts um, of the corridor, especially on the western side where you have a lot of curb cuts or sometimes, you know, the never-ending curb cut, right? There's not any curb for the whole property, so you have one giant driveway. Um, so looking at the issues that come with that. Um, parallel service streets, so looking for ways to move local traffic to where not everybody has to go on Oak Street. If you want to move between those businesses, maybe you can access it from parallel corridors um, to the north or south. Uh, traffic signal, signal redeployment, can we relocate or move or change some of those signals uh, to meet the demands as they change over time? Active transportation, um, continuous sidewalks, um, trail integration. I know you've got an amazing grant uh, coming that you're going to develop that trail along Little Creek, and uh, I think that's going to really change that area. So making sure as that's developed, do we have ways for people um, to access uh, the businesses and areas along Oak Street as well. And then neighborhood connectivity, which is exactly what it sounds like. You know, how do the neighborhoods that surround Oak Street um, work along with this corridor? So overall, you have a proposed transportation uh, network. You have kind of this main line of Oak Street. Um, you have some parallel corridors. You have both Merriman and Polk on this side of the interstate. So we looked at ways to kind of punch those through in a couple areas. They're really almost complete, um, just lacking a few areas to make those to where they really are functional parallel corridors and alleviate some of that traffic. Um, and then on this side of the corridor, looking at parallel areas, well, again, you already have a lot of these that are partially put together, right, where you can kind of weave through um, these areas where the hotels are and things, but there are a couple blocks to making it all the way through, but looking at extending those um, to help improve traffic flow. Um, and even some extensions down here, uh, connecting these neighborhoods and the school, um, and then up here as well. Um, and then you'll see throughout, we have kind of these little call outs, they're in the plan. Um, Again, for every section, detailed, depending on what you're looking at, um, but kind of give you all the details um, that go along with that. I will say as far as access management, um, what you really have with this plan is a custom access management plan. We spent a lot of time looking at existing driveways, talking with uh, business owners along the corridor, understanding how their businesses function. You know, some people have to have that front loading. They may have like a garage type door, overhead door that opens, you know, if they have uh, some sort of automobile service center. So understanding what their needs were for access, being respectful of that and trying to figure out how we can, you know, still try to make it to where it's a safer environment with perhaps fewer driveways um, in the future, but respecting everybody's ability to function um, as a business. Um, and then the last part, you'll see these blue circles. These show areas of intersection improvements that we're recommending um, along the roadway 
and Richard's going to tell you more about those. I will say that our traffic team studied all of the intersections he's going to talk to you about, um, and so we took that data that they had and then looked at that in the plan. So, Richard, you want to talk about that? Good evening, Council. Uh, Richard Corbin. I'm a transportation engineer at Garver. Uh, and I had the pleasure of working with this team to develop some conceptual intersection improvements along the corridor. Um, so one of the major goals that became apparent when working with the steering committee and the public was that you know traffic was a major priority along this corridor. That was one of the things that kept coming to the top uh, was you know of what they wanted to see out of this study, which was the better traffic flow throughout the corridor. So we spent a substantial amount of time on that portion of the study. And really what we wanted to do was come up with uh, recommendations that weren't just, you know, major widening that impacted businesses and decreased walkability. We wanted to do strategic improvements at the intersections along the corridor. Um, so that's what these are. We, we uh, did a traffic study uh, that an analyzed the, the existing traffic and then also safety along the corridor. And uh, we came up with uh, recommendations for intersection improvements um, at eight intersections. Um, and there's, there's six of them right here. There's more on the next slides. Uh, I'm going to take you through a few of them in detail. You can see the types of, uh, at the top of each circle, uh, it just gives you a quick summary of the type of impacts that you're going to get from these improvements. Some of these are, you know, minor improvements. They're just intersection delay reduction of 10% in the top left. But some of them you're getting, like Museum Road, uh, with some minor, very minor improvements, you're getting things like 60% delay reduction, 70% delay reduction. So, um, and then it's mostly, I mean, as you all know, what the traffic study found was east of I-40, kind of east of I-40 to El Singer is really a hot spot for traffic congestion. So a lot of the recommendations are more concentrated over there. Um, so I'm just going to, we don't have time to do every single one of these in detail, but I'm just going to kind of focus on a couple of them that are some of the more significant improvements. Uh, they're at Museum Road, just east of the interstate, the first signal just east of the interstate. Um, just uh, adding a right turn lane on the north leg of Museum Road and extending your uh, left turn lane storage length on the south leg of Museum Road and then installing a, it's a protected permissive signal, basically a flashing yellow arrow with a green uh, protected phase. Uh, that's going to give you about an estimated 60% uh, delay reduction, allows you more green time on Oak Street. Um, so that's an example there. Uh, German Lane, similar type improvements. We're recommending uh, adding right turn lanes on both the north leg and the south leg of German Lane, uh, as well as extending the left turn lane on the south leg of German Lane. And it's my understanding the city already has a, a project slated down there on the south leg that will make that left turn lane improvement because they're widening it all to three lanes with a center turn lane. So that portion will already be underway. But then in the future, adding those right turn lanes in would get you a delay reduction of about 70%. And then uh, one of the areas that we really looked at in detail, um, and I apologize for that being a little small, it's hard to see, but I'll take you through it, um, is Amity and Elsinger. Um, that area, as y'all know, is, is a really hot spot, and Amity a lot of times will back up into Elsinger Road whenever there's a red, a red light there. Um, so we looked at a few different options for what could be done here. Um, option one is kind of the minimum of what we recommend to do, which would be uh, if you're going east on Oak Street and you want to take a ride onto Amity, that right turn lane uh, really is, is too short, and it's backing up out into the through lane. So we'd recommend lengthening that right turn lane quite a bit to the, the proper length. And then also, if you're coming out of Elsinger Boulevard and you want to take a right, um, adding uh, lengthening the right turn lane there as well would prevent that from backing up into the through lanes. That's kind of just a minimum. Um, you get about a 12% westbound, 16% eastbound delay reduction. Uh, but then if you go on to a more substantial improvement, you can get an additional 20% and additional 6% of delay reduction and that would be and that also kind of provides better connectivity as well so it's basically taking that bob courtway drive and relocating it to elsinger uh, boulevard and basically what that would allow you to do is to take the amity road and existing bob courtway drive and just make those all right in right outs so there's no left turns allowed there anymore um, and you could drop that signal altogether 
and just have the one signal there at Elsinger Boulevard. And one of the reasons we think that, you know, could make sense kind of from a broad, broad scale standpoint is you can see that uh, maroon line, Elsinger Boulevard, that would be with the relocated Bob Courtway Drive. And you can see just kind of the connectivity that that, that lines up with your arterial 6th Street and Elsinger Boulevard. And it would line up Bob Courtway Drive, which is also a significant connector. Uh, all at one spot so people don't have to kind of zigzag over to Bob Courtway Drive and get out on Oak Street unnecessarily. Um, and that would also alleviate the issue of the Amity Road signal backing up into Elsinger Boulevard. Um, so that's just a few of the um, examples of the type of intersection improvements um, that we're recommending uh, along the corridor. Those are all in your packets with descriptions down below. So any questions on that before I pass it over to James or right. yes, we looked at um, the <clears throat> school PM peak hour and the afternoon or and the evening peak hour, and um, yeah, there's that was we we picked the highest of the peak hours and based our based our recommendations based off of whichever was the highest peak hour. So. What are you doing Friday afternoon about four o'clock? <laughs> uh, I think I, I know where this is going. I want to show you. <laughs> Friday. Friday afternoon yes. is, it's awful. is, is awful. On, on this side of it is awful. Mm -hmm. Really from about three o'clock on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Real three o'clock. What are you doing at three o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. Not up close and personal like I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know it's a it's a big issue. You're close. Gross. You're close. You just need to move some of that stuff a little farther in. Uh, in between that stuff. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> All right, I'll pass it off to pass it off to James. We'll have more Q and A at the end. Yeah. So one of the the main focuses and and reasons why when we decided to to work with Garver and RDG on this, they had previously worked on a, a corridor for seventy one B uh, in Fayetteville, and part of that study it looked at transportation and it looked at land use at the same time. And that integrated approach is, is very, very important. If you're so often the planning for streets, widening those things, it isn't taken into context of the supporting land use. And so you can't really fully develop a good plan for the street without understanding the context of the land use. And you can't really understand a good plan for the land use without understanding the context of the street. And that that is, I think, the most beneficial thing about this plan is that it, it looks at those things uh, as a holistic one, which is which is really, really important, and it is an innovative approach with this as well. In terms of, of land use, uh, these were some of the, the values and things that, that uh, the consultants looked at when they, they uh, did this. And the, the first being that there was a, really a high respect for existing business. Um, there, there are parts of the corridor that aren't the, the prettiest looking in the world, right? They may not necessarily reflect uh, the, the front door that we always want to project towards uh, sort of the rest of the world for, for Conway, but those businesses are important. They're livelihoods for a lot of folks, uh, and so we wanted to provide a, a supportive environment for those existing uses to allow them uh, to continue and, and to recognize the reality that they will they are here, they will be here in the future, and, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, additionally, a, a major focus of this it was looking at and thinking about having more housing along the corridor. We understand that we are sort of in this, this period of transition where folks are shopping online more, and the sort of the retail environment could change over the next 20 to 30 years. And so what do you do in those locations where you may have future vacant uses? A great opportunity is housing, increasing the resident population. 
So that, that allows a transition of uses in those locations. It also works to make the corridor more walkable, uh, getting more people in those locations, so that's great. Uh, additionally, allowing for an evolution in uses over time, uh, gradual as it, as it adjusts with the market, not forcing things, uh, sort of responding and going along with the market over time. Um, recognizing the importance of, of buffering, uh, that's really important when we're respecting the existing businesses that, that are there that may have potential impacts on other types of uses like LKQ or, or sort of those auto environment type uses that are there that, that uh, can have more impacts and, and using those buffers in a productive manner. And then also developing a regulating plan. So how this plan can be, can be implemented into the, the city's regulation. So there, um, the overall land use plan focused in, broke out into to four major areas. Of, it, it, it was fun watching Marty work on this uh, because I, it, I don't think that it was the, the, it wasn't in the scope for there to be a illustrated master plan for the entire corridor but once he got going, he, he couldn't stop. And so uh, we ended up getting, a, 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 I would say, a, quite a bit more than what we, what we <laughs> paid for because he just, he kept designing stuff and uh, it was pretty, pretty wonderful to see uh, that, that evolve. Uh, the first is sort of the, the area from I-40 back to the west, back towards downtown. And this really being viewed sort of as, a, as an extension of downtown, continuing some of that form that we've seen with the new come and go, and uh, sort of use, utilizing strategic infill opportunities, infill opportunities like pad sites in front of Kroger, uh, and redevelopment to occur slowly, uh, the energy site, uh, that being redeveloped, uh, and really having a system of the main line for Oak Street and then parallel access on Merriman and, and Polk to, so that people can get through and along without having to get on the, the main line of the street. Uh, the second really is the area of, of Amity in Ils Elsinger, uh, and in some ways using the uh, Connect Conway as a, a, a sort of organizing focus for that, uh, that recognizing we've got a lot of uses that will continue. We think they'll, they'll continue, they're, they're really beneficial within the area but that there are also some infill opportunities for residential and that uh, sort of utilizing the creek as an amenity, the, the trail as an amenity to sort of catalyze some of that additional residential infill and commercial infill in that, in that location. Uh, the next uh, is sort of around uh, the East German uh, corridor, uh, so Little Creek to Gold Creek, uh, and sort of the centralizing uh, idea here is is building a node out and around for a, a, a real neighborhood uh, that's focused on on harps and that that node of, of East German uh, and Oak. Uh, one of the things that's that's most exciting to me is this uh, the transition that we we know uh, for instance with with Brookside that it's uh, the, the mobile home park that it's it's largely empty now uh, and so there's sort of an illustrated master plan of, of how that can be utilized uh, in the future with uh, various mixed density housing. Um, and then, you know, one of our bonuses over here uh, is the, what we call the, the event center node. Uh, the city made, a, you know, a huge investment with, with the event center and it presents an opportunity with a lot of that land that exists out, out in front of it uh, for additional uses, uh, possibly hotel, restaurant, uh, different uh, flex type uh, uses in those locations. That may be a longer range goal, um, but that is a sort of a possibility that I think could be very beneficial. Within the plan, you'll see um, sort of illustrations that are, that are like this. So all of the recommendations uh, have sort of specific call-outs. So it's very, very detailed, but it's in a very, very graphical form which is one of the, the things I really love the most about this is that, that all of those details uh, are there. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Julia. So you mentioned the regulating plan. Um, so just looking, we did kind of an assessment of existing zoning 
As you can see, a majority of the corridor now is red, which is the C3, so that's your high intensity um, commercial zoning. Um, and there are a couple pockets of some PUDs and one area of office, I believe, but most of it is not high intensity commercial, um, which is, which there's nothing wrong with it, um, but we wanted to look at uh, things that were a little more responsive to what you have and kind of the synergy of going. Um, the other thing, you have an existing design overlay district um, from Hark Rider to Ingram, and that area is, um, you have this overlay that controls uh, some of the aesthetics and the location of the buildings on the site and the pedestrian amenities. Um, and so a lot of your redevelopment that's happened in the last decade, your Med Express, <clears throat> now the come and go, um, and those other buildings in that area are a product of that. And when we talked with um, the public, both through um, the survey, out, survey outreach we did, um, the city did some outreach as well on social media. Um, there were a lot of positive responses to that type of development um, and kind of asking whether, is there a way to kind of keep that going? Um, so you already have those regulations in place um, up to Ingram. So that's this kind of gray clouded area here. Um, so you have that covered, and I would say, you know, our recommendation is to, you know, maybe either keep that overlay district going, it seems to be functioning pretty well, or if there's specific tweaks that you want to make, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but that, that seems to be working pretty well for that area. Um, and then you have kind of the remainder of Oak Street until um, you reach I-40 here on the west side. And I think that is a specific uh, area as well and functions um, quite differently than other parts of the corridor. So creating a, a new special district for that area. Um, and then looking at this area between I-40 and Little Creek um, that includes Amity and Elsinger um, and looking at that area, that's one of your higher intensity uses, right, with both traffic um, and retail and restaurants environment. Um, so again, I think it needs a little bit different treatment. Um, and in the plan, we go through some of the specific things that we're looking at in those areas. But we want to respond to that. I also think that this area has some of the um, greatest parking lots. Um, and like James mentioned, um, something that we see more and more is, you know, the parking areas that were created for Black Friday, you know, as Black Friday existed, you know, 15 years ago, you know, that, that level of parking is honestly, it's, it's not usually needed. They're still busy, but there's a lot of parking that goes underutilized um, throughout the year. And finding ways to allow people um, to be able to redevelop within those parking lots, right, to get more use out of their property. Um, like James said, it can be a way to integrate additional residential uses in there that can help support existing businesses along the corridor. So we want to make sure honestly all up and down the corridor, but I think the biggest opportunity is here is that we put regulations in place that allow that to happen, um, you know, that don't just limit it to um, the large setbacks that it has now. Um, and so people can re re reutilize that and again have agility in changing markets. And then this last piece is um, <clears throat> from Little Creek down to the Mint Center. And I think this area, like we talked about, has the highest potential, I think, for new development and honestly, a lot of redevelopment. There's quite a bit on the west side of the interstate as well, but you know, there's a lot of uh, places transitioning, I think, um, along this area. Several, we watched several businesses and uses transition, you know, throughout the year that we were doing this project, which was pretty interesting um, to watch. And so, again, we want to make sure that we set up the right environment for that um, and respect that. We do think that there's probably a potential to have two sub-districts, one, like James mentioned, for the East German node area to make sure, again, that that can build out as a functioning neighborhood node. And then the event center, if that's something that the city likes that idea to, to pursue, is to look at that, again, just a little bit differently and have um, some special sub-district regulations that go along with that. <clears throat> Again, these are just ideas. You'll see some of them, I think the districts extend 
further north and south, um, and some of them here are still just like one to two blocks off of the, the main corridor. <clears throat> City quality issues. So we want to have green space um, where we can. We got a lot of comments from the public about aesthetics and landscaping and street trees, you know, that type of thing they want to see. They want it to be appropriate for the corridor, but they wanted there to be some integration of those types of things into the corridor as it grows and expands. Um, quality functional streetscape, so making sure you have good lighting. Um, if, you know, there are sidewalks and paths um, with setbacks so you're not standing, you know, right on. There's, there's some areas, you know, where you have, if you do have sidewalks, they're directly adjacent to the curb. So the semi truck that's going 45 miles an hour, you know, is about six inches from brushing your shoulder if you're using that sidewalk. That's not a comfortable place to walk. People don't want to do that um, if they don't have to. So trying to find ways to have uh, side, sidewalks where you have a green space or buffer um, between yourself and, and the roadway. Placemaking, so looking at different features at uh, certain locations, public art, gateway features, um, that sort of thing. Uh, utilities, we, again, we met with Conway Corporation. I know that they already have plans um, to do some relocation of utilities over the coming year. Um, a lot of what we looked at was, you know, there may be areas where you can bury utilities, but sometimes it makes more sense. Um, it can be very expensive to bury utilities. And so sometimes it makes more sense to just move them a block off of um, the corridor and things like that. So we had some really good conversations about that. And the potential for redesignating US 64, uh, this section, um, even the possibility of removing it between Hark Rider and downtown, and the possibility that that could create, you know, some flexibility for some of these uh, design solutions if it's not um, an RDOT facility. <coughs> so these are just some examples. Um, you'll see some of these signs. There's Colton's. Uh, family dollar, you know, what this could look like if you did have, again, you know, a sidewalk with a green space um, and that sort of thing. And then over here on the east side of the interstate, there's the Chipotle. Again, just try, trying to understand how it could look differently um, if, if there is investment in those areas. Um, Finally, this is my favorite part of the plan. This is the implementation piece, and I think this is really exciting. There's a lot of plans, you know, that are created that never have the synergy um, to move forward. Um, I will say that throughout this planning process, we really wanted to create an implementable plan. Um, Mr. Walden and the steering committee members and other members of the city staff, I felt like really pushed us um, to think about it in that way, like what can we do that can really be done, right? Not just pie in the sky um, ideas. Um, so we've created an implementation plan. It's at the very end of your book, and I, I, would, I would encourage you to look at it in depth because, again, I think it's a very interesting part of the plan. So it takes everything that we've covered and basically says, and here's kind of how you would do it. And one of the things I like best about this is that it's color-coded. You have the red, which is a public investment project. You have blue projects, which are private investment projects, because not all this can be done, right, but just by the city. And then you have purple projects throughout that are a public-private endeavor. And I love that it, this is laid out in um, the graphic map format, uh, because I think it really shows how to implement this. It's not, you know, it is something where everybody has to work together to truly realize um, the potential of the plan and honestly gives you a roadmap um, for how to do it. So for every diagram that we have, you'll see that each, you know, project is numbered and then you have a corresponding spreadsheet that tells you more about that project, you know, what the improvement is and also what is the benefit, right? Why would we want to do this? Um, and then gives you a prioritization period, you know, from one to five years, five to 10, and then 10 plus. And again, these are color coded in the same way for public, private, and then public private um, investments. Um, so th that actually concludes our discussion or our presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions.
I know we're out of time, but I just wanted to add one quick comment. I was on this committee, and as you can tell, a lot of good work was done. We've done dozens of these, of, of, not these, we've done dozens of studies over the years over various topics, and most of the time they turn out to be very beneficial. Every now and then one pops up, it's like, I'm not sure we got anything out of that one. However, this, I think, is the best one we've ever done for a lot of reasons. This actually addresses a very complex and complicated issue that everybody is concerned about. And it addresses it comprehensively, but it breaks it into manageable pieces where you don't have to do the whole thing to start seeing results. It's a, some are private, some are public, some are a mixture. And so we can figure out which ones to start and it's, you're really gonna see change happen because of this one. This, this was very, very well done. Thank y'all.